is going on today guys welcome back to the channel i know it's been far too long and today we have a video that's been a long time in the making a couple of months ago a buddy of mine reached out to me about putting together this video and we put together an entire slideshow and we're just now getting to make it right now we're going to be talking about hooking and slicing if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button for me we just hit 3,000 subscribers on the channel and with your help we can go even higher we hope you enjoy let's get right into it Right, so here we go today's video is all about hooking and slicing we're going to learn how to do it the proper way to where maybe we can be the ones that are out there creating these awesome shots to the green and if you're brand new to the game maybe you'll learn something so first of all what exactly is a slice shot or the opposite of that would be a hook shot so a slice is where we're purposefully trying not to hit perfect. Now, why on earth would we do that? It's because it's a lot easier to hit the far extreme side of a target, especially when we're at max overpower, than it is to hit perfect sometimes. So we release at the far side of the target, either the extreme right, which would be a slice shot, or the extreme left, which would be a hook shot. And so again, why on earth do we do this? Because it's easier to execute, okay? Plus, when we get tailwind, the ball is going to stay in the air longer when we hit a hook or a slice shot, and we're gonna gain distance. Plus, if we can somehow aim to a higher point on a fairway, say up a mountain, like we have on a couple of our shots, we're gonna be able to hit the ball even farther. We're gonna kind of trick the game in that sense. So. We can hit it farther, it stays in the air longer. We're also able to achieve more curl, which helps us on some shots than a typical driver would be able to curl. So on those APOC shots, we get to put a lot of curl on it, and then we hit a slice shot with that, we get even more curl than what we could execute with that kind of a driver. Just take a look at this shot right here. We're trying to curl this ball all the way around the trees that are in the middle, and we're trying to reach the fairway even farther. And there's no way to go right over the trees. So we go around the trees. We pull all the way back. We make our adjustment. We hit the far extreme side. We slice that ball. Look at it fly. We hit the fairway. Keeps on rolling. No way we'd be able to achieve that kind of a shot with a normal curled shot. We need that slice. So how do we know how many rings to move for a slice or a hook shot? Let's just say over the years, there's a lot of work that's put into this. This isn't just something we dreamed up overnight. And so the initial piece of work said that we can move around the equivalent of 27 miles an hour in wind for a slice. You should be close. However, it only works some of the times. But then a group of players really got together and really started diving into what makes a hook and a slice shot work and how do we properly adjust Okay, and so now there's a calculator that we can use and the calculator is in the description below. Go check it out. It's on a Google document. In there, we can uh, put in this, the, the club that we have in our bag and it will tell us how many rings we need to move for a, a hook or a slice shot. And this is pretty accurate, 99% accurate. So give it a try, go down in the description below, Look at the calculator, I'm gonna show it to you and I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, so here we have the Google document that you're gonna find in the description below. And when you first open it up, you're gonna to come to this bag setup page. Here we have seven different bags that we can set up within this Google document to make it really easy to navigate through. We're gonna look at this first bag here. We have the Thor's Hammer 6, is what we're really gonna be focusing on for this next replay. All the other clubs can be selected by just hitting these down arrows and selecting your club. The second page should look familiar to you if you've seen the slider school video. This is the same thing from that. If you need to check out that video, go check it out now. It's on the channel. The third page is just a more detailed slider chart. Change ring scale is needed. Very similar to the one on the slider school video. 
And then we have a min max quick reference sheet, which also gives us a quick reference for the rings needed to adjust for a slice shot. Here we have basic ring adjustment for a slice with no overpower with the Thor's Hammer 6, it's gonna be 14.4 rings. And then for the Thor's Hammer 6, we have a ring adjustment for a slice with overpower of 16.3 rings. So this is what we're gonna be taking a look at in the next video. There's also a couple of cool little pages here. Here we have the percentage yard chart. If you have not seen my video called Tournament Shot Dialing 101, you can check that one out now. We go into a detailed view of how this works. Very similar on the next page as well. So we have a really cool Google document put together by Fosette Buke and his team. Thank you guys so much for putting this together for us, guys. Go check this out. This is going to improve your game dramatically. So let's take a look at a replay. All right, so here we go. We're going to be taking a look at a full slice shot with a Thor's Hammer 6. Now here you can see we're going to get our initial aim right at the edge of the fairway and the rough line. That's just for this replay for the purpose of showing you exactly where this ball is supposed to land when we hit our slice shot. So we get our initial aim there. Now we know with the Thor's Hammer 6 by using our chart that we need to make a 16 ring adjustment with the Thor's Hammer 6. So here you can see our middle grid line. Now not everybody has grid lines and in the case that you don't have a grid line, you're going to have to eyeball it or you're going to have to use your take shot button like you would normally adjust for a shot by turning the screen sideways. Here we have a middle grid line, so we're going to put the middle grid line on the left hand side of the circle. Then we're going to move it our first 10 rings. So there we moved it 10. We know with the Thor's Hammer 6, we need to go 16 rings. We put it at the left-hand side of the yellow circle, and we move 16 rings. From here, we've got our aiming point. Now we do have to take the wind into account. So we go ahead and turn the screen, and we make our wind adjustment for 1.2 miles an hour here. Make our adjustment, and now we're ready to take our shot. We pull it straight back. We try to hit the far extreme right hand side, full slice. And we can see that the ball landed exactly where we were aiming with the Thor's Hammer 6. So these numbers are for standard wind conditions. So if you're playing in a strong tailwind, for example, you're gonna to need to add more to these numbers, a couple of rings. If you're slicing into headwind, it's blowing against the slice, for example, you're gonna take off a few less rings, okay? The other important part is you do have to hit the extreme point. A lot of times we know whenever we hit that perfect slice or that perfect hook. These numbers are accurate to get your first bounce position where you aimed or intended. However, what happens after the first bounce is entirely up to the curl you apply. So let's talk about that. So here we're gonna be taking a look at a full curl, full overpower slice shot. See, we get it to curl in around the trees nicely, and we hit the green. Here we're gonna be taking a look at a no curl-ish slice shot. There's very little curl put on the ball, but we're still slicing our shot. See here we hit the fairway, goes exactly where we want it to go, bounce over, it's a good shot. And here on this one we're going to be looking at what we call a reverse slice shot, where we're actually curling in the opposite direction. And the idea here is that the ball is going to travel more in a straight line. And we're going to look at exactly how this type of shot works. And so the amount of curl that we use is crucial to the outcome of a shot. So we're going to look at the diagram here on my side. Depending on the amount of curl that we use, we could play a standard overpower shot. The ball is going to travel in a straight line. Now, if we're here and we decide that we want to play a power slice or a power hook shot, we see the power slice with the red line and the power hook with the purple line. 
neither one of those is going to give us a very good outcome. So here, it's not an opportunity to play a power hook or a power slice. Now moving on, let's say we wanted to play one of those straight, pull the ball back, and hook it to the right, or hook it to the left. We can see that line, it's still not going to be a very good shot for us. Okay, it's not going to give us as much curl, okay, but it's still too much for this particular shot. So we haven't got the outcome we're looking for. So what kind of a shot can we play here? Well, this is a great opportunity to play one of those straight line reverse slice or reverse hooks shots. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So here, let's adjust for our shot. Move it the number of rings to the left. We'll curl back to the left and we'll release to the right. And it's gonna give us that straight line shot. We didn't have to worry about hitting Overpower perfect, goes in a straight line, ends up exactly where we want it to be, straight down the middle of the fairway. So the amount of curl that we use directly affects the outcome of the shot. If we're looking to achieve a straight shot overall, we want to use the curl so it lines up with the amount of slice that we're, we're, we're putting on the, the shot. So if you look here at the picture, that ball and the arrow are still in a perfectly straight line. Whereas if we're using like the apocalypse, we're going to use less than max curl. Otherwise, the ball is not going to follow that extreme straight line. So the curl is crucial to the overall outcome. So how do we judge the curl? Let's take a look. Here are some examples, guys. I want you to look at the picture on the far left. Okay. If we play the left curl to where it lines up exactly with the arrow, which is with that Titan ball just to the outside part of the circle, and we hit a slice, it's still traveling in a straight line, just like the bottom picture below, where we put the ball in the middle of the circle and we hit perfect. Now, if we wanted to do the same thing with a straight pullback slice shot, the picture in the middle, Okay, we're straight pulling it back and we're hitting a slice. That's going to be the same as about one ball of curl. It's the exact same shot as if we played one ball of curl and we tried to hit perfect. If we put half a ball of left curl, like the picture on the right, half a ball of left curl and we sliced it, it's going to be the same as putting half a ball of curl and hitting it perfect, the opposite direction. Okay, so... What we need to notice is that the angle between the slice and the curl line is the same as the angle between a normal shot and its curl line. We just rotate the screen and it makes sense and it lines up the same way with the arrow every single time. Here are those exact same pictures that we just looked at, only they're turned on their side so we can see the similarity. Picture on the left. Pull back, hit perfect, same as one ball of curl and slice. Pull back, straight slice is the same as putting one ball of curl and hitting perfect. Half a ball of curl to the left and slicing will give us the same outcome as half a ball of curl to the right and hitting perfect. So the overall decision of whether you hook or you slice a hole depends on the hole itself. Does the hole bend? Are we looking for the most distance? Are there obstacles like trees in the way? Everything plays a factor in deciding what kind of a shot that we want to hit, as well as the wind. The wind plays a huge part in the overall first bounce and position of a slice shot. On this hole, if we try to slice with the wind blowing left, the wind's going to hold up that slice and it's not going to let it travel as far. But a counter, we might deduct a ring or so from the slice value on the calculator. So instead of playing 15 rings, we know it's going to be a little bit less. We adjust 14 rings. Similarly, in headwind, we might experience compression. So it's better to reduce the number of rings slightly. If the wind's blowing the opposite directions, the basic numbers from the calculator should be fine. However, in strong tailwinds and favorable crosswinds, we should add a small amount of rings to the, the, the adjustment just to make sure it is perfect. I mean, the proof is in the pudding, guys. So just take a look at this one last shot we take here. We've got tailwind 6.3 miles an hour. We make our adjustment for that hook 
and this instant we're actually going to place that reverse hook shot so we put our curl on it we go max overpower full hook to the left just take a look at what this ball does we get it to bounce we get it to bounce we get it to roll it's going to the green it's going to the green might go in the hole might go in the hole there we go we get the ace booyah so there you go guys everything that you need to know about hooking and slicing hope you enjoyed this video if you did once again please hit that subscribe button stick around with us for more golf clash content we'll see you guys out on the course Thank you.